Kids Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Money has been called many things. But the cynical observation that applies to our story is from Thomas Jefferson, who said, Money, and not morality, is the principle of commercial nations. Change that a little to, Money, and not morality, governs most of our lives. And you will understand our tale. It begins a week after a death in a family. And it begins on a jarring note. Miss Armstrong... I have been a jeweler here for over 35 years, and I've never seen anything like it. Mother willed it to me. She loved that pearl necklace. But it's, it's not for me. It's, it's more for an older woman. What's it worth, Mr. Towner? I want to sell it. No, 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 my dear girl. My father bought it from you. He didn't buy this pearl necklace from me. Miss Armstrong, these pearls are imitation. They're made of paste. They're fake. <laughs> mystery drama, Crime Casts a Shadow, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Evie Juster and William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by Carrier Air Conditioning and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. theme is money and morality. It is said of Diogenes that he walked around in the daylight carrying a lantern, looking for an honest man. Well, that was a little extreme. There are honest men and women, but there are also otherwise honest men who sometimes yield to extreme temptation. Bart Lerner, for example. Yes. Yes, thank you for being so thoughtful. No, 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 there was no suffering. She just, well, drifted away. M- my stepdaughter and I were with her when she died. We've expected it for almost a year, after all. No, there was no chance of, a, of recovery. It was nephritis, and the kidneys just stopped functioning. Uh, thank you again. I, I sure appreciate your call. Yes, c- goodbye. Hi, Bart. You got a minute? Oh, hey, Gay. You up so early? It's only 9.30. Well, sure, I'm not expected my plans till 10. What is it? Remember this? Sure, of course. Your mother's pearl necklace. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Well, what are you doing with it? I thought it was in the safe deposit box of the bank. It was. I picked it up yesterday. Oh? Well, why? Well, my mother left it to me in her will. No conditions attached. She suspected I'd sell it and... Use the money as a nest egg. Well, why not, honey? It's too old-fashioned for a young woman like you. You might as well sell it. I tried to. Well, you mean today? Mm Mm-hmm. At 9 o'clock this morning, I had an appointment with Max Tonner. Oh. My father bought the pearl necklace from him years ago. Fifteen years ago. Five years before he died. Yeah. Well, what, uh, where did old Max offer you for it? Nothing. Nothing? Nope. Not a cent. Max said the necklace is worthless. The pearls are artificial, made of some kind of paste or something. Won't be darned. Are you sure? He was. He sold a real pearl necklace to my father for twelve thousand dollars. I, I thought I might sell it for fifteen or more. Well, I don't know about that, Gabe. The real necklace is worth that much or more, but that's beside the point now. This imitation isn't worth anything. But what happened to the original necklace? Have you any idea? No, honey, I, I really haven't. Well, didn't my mother ever talk to you about it? No, your mother was a very sick woman for the last year, Gay. She was bedridden. I I haven't seen her wear that necklace for many years. Did you put it in the safe deposit box for her? Not that I recall. No, she must have done that herself before she was confined. What could have happened to the real necklace and who replaced it with this? 
Here, let me ask you something. What value has the necklace for you? Well, it, it was a kind of trust fund for me. With $15,000, I could begin to build an estate. Sure, sure. And instead, you feel feel cheated. I don't know what I feel. I, I can't believe that Mother cheated me. Do you think she sold it? But if she did, why didn't she tell me? And why should she have sold it, Bart? You and my mother were pretty well fixed for money. Oh, not that well off. Oh, sure, the past year I've done well. But before that, with your mother's illness, we were pretty pinched. You know, medical expenses and... Ah, well, let's not talk about it. It's, it's only two weeks ago since she... I know. I feel... I feel terrible. <laughs> like a vulture. But mother would have understood... The necklace was left to me to keep or to sell. And now I can't do either. Could she have sold it? Sure, she may have. You say that, Bart, as if you know something you're holding back. No, 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 it's nothing I know. But it, it is something you suspect, right? Well, I... Uh, I was puzzled at the time, I admit. I was... I was thinking of taking out a second mortgage in the house to meet some large bills. And your mother objected strongly. You know how she was. Pay as you go and stay out of debt. I know, I know. But if she sold the necklace, why didn't she tell me about it? Probably because she expected to redeem it. I, uh, I really don't know, Gay. Well, I want to find out. Look, I'll tell you what. The necklace was worth, what, ten... Say $15,000, right? I know my father paid more than ten. And that amount of money was going to be your nest egg. Right. Okay, I'm going to make out a check for that amount and give it to you. What? No, no, I mean it. You'll, you'll have all your money and we'll we'll say no more about it. Well, but first... Now, you... not a word, honey. This is what your mother would have wanted. Oh, then you know she sold the necklace. I know nothing of the sort. All I know is that I never took a loan and somehow the bills got paid. The nurse who stayed with us, the doctor bills, the hospital tests. Oh, sure, the insurance covered part of it, but almost half of the expenses we had to pay for. I insisted, she explained, but she just... Smiled, you know, the way she did and said I wasn't to worry. I had enough to worry about with my contracting business. So you suspected she'd sold the necklace, huh? Your mother never would let the subject come up. I didn't realize... Now, look, it's all settled. But I just can't let you... Honey, look it. at it this way. If your mother helped me out at a time when I sure needed help, I owe her whatever the necklace is worth today. We'll make it $15,000. The necklace was left to you. It's gone. Let's forget it. But I can't forget what I owe. I'll have a certified check for you for $15,000 when I come home from work. But I don't know what to say. I'm very fond of you, honey. <laughs> I think of you as a daughter. Oh, and you know I'm fond of you. And all I can say is, thank you. It's an awful lot of money. No, I don't well this year. I don't think about it. Well, what do you suppose became of the real pearl necklace? Somebody bought it. Through the jeweler, Max Thomas? Maybe, or maybe it was sold direct. I wouldn't know. Why? Curiosity. <laughs> I just can't imagine Mother selling it without saying anything. I thought we'd agreed to forget about it, Gay. Oh, I suppose I should, but, oh, it bugs me. It, it's so unlike Mother. Well, there's nothing to do. Just forget it. I can't. I have to find out what happened to the real pearl necklace. I don't know, Gay. Sounds all right to me. I wish someone would drop 15 grand into my lap. But don't you think there's something funny about it? You're a lawyer. You ought to know something. Well, not the way you've explained it to me. A, your stepfather was pressed for money. Right. B, your mother sells her pearl necklace and pays the bills. Mm -hmm. C, your stepfather suspects that what she has done, and now he very generously is giving you a check for 15 grand to compensate for the loss you've sustained because the necklace was sold. Mm, I've got a feeling there's something odd about this whole business. Would my mother have done something like this? You knew her press. Well, she certainly wasn't evasive or deceptive. What you want to know is who's got the real necklace, right? Yes, yes, I do. Some rich old doll in the city. So what? Oh. I... I don't know what you're out to prove. Some woman's got the necklace, you've got the money, or you will have it. So why not forget it? No. You think your mother didn't sell the necklace. You think that maybe Bart Lerner stole it. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just can't believe it. Not Bart. He's a good man. Well, lots of good guys have turned bad. Oh, not Bart. Well, then what about this feeling of yours? Well, it's all so unsatisfactory. 
Now, listen to me. I telephoned Max Tolliner, the jeweler, late this morning because Bart said maybe Max had bought the necklace from my mother. The answer is no. Max sold it to my father. But he hasn't seen it since, not in 15 years. So where could Mother have disposed of the thing? Well, maybe in a city. Lots of dealers. You mean fences, right? No, legitimate dealers. The necklace hadn't been stolen. Your mother owned it. She had a right to sell it or to borrow on it. Well, but maybe somebody took it out of the safe deposit box at the bank. Impossible. Only someone authorized is allowed to examine a safety deposit box. Mother, me, Bart Lerner. And I didn't swipe the necklace. And neither did your mother. It was her property. She had a right to remove it. And neither you nor Bart Lerner had that right. So if your mother didn't sell it, and if you didn't steal it... Don't be stupid, Prince. Well, then Bart Lerner did. (laughs) Look, we're going around in circles, baby. Let's have some dinner. We can talk more over some food, huh? All right, Prince. But I want to get to the bottom of this funny business for my own satisfaction. It just wasn't like Mother to sell such a gift for my father. Hello? Uh, Yes, this is Arnold Walling. Oh, why, yes, of course. Uh, Well, perhaps it could be arranged tonight. Oh, that sounds impossible. Uh, Well, let me see. It's... Almost seven o'clock. You say she's out to dinner or then possibly the theater? Uh, yes, yes, I understand your problem. It's a matter of time. Uh, you will have a check? Yes, of course. I will return your call. I will do my best. Goodbye. <sighs> and there goes my evening. But a fee is a fee. <laughs> Glad to see you out. I was awfully sorry to learn about your mother. Thanks, Mike. How's the ambulance chaser? And how's the scandal monger? Uh, Sit on, Mike. Uh, just for a second, Press. Uh, if Gay doesn't mind. Of course not. Oh, thanks. You all right, Gay? <laughs> I think so. It was bound to come, so we were prepared for it. But it still leaves a big blank in our lives. Bart's in mine. Yeah. You uh, going to stay on with him? No, for a while. But I really want a place of my own. Well, what about this clod here? This Claude's going to marry the lady whenever she sets the date. Oh, Gay, don't. He's just after your money. I've just come into some, Mike. Don't don't tell him, baby. Don't you know that a reporter is like a ferret and a rabbit warren? Scrap of news and he pounces? Well, maybe he can help. Name it, Gay. Look, Mike, as a pal, give Gay a break, huh? And no story without her approval, all right? Cross my heart, Press. What's the story, Gay? Well... My mother left me a $15,000 pearl necklace. Wow. <laughs> wow was right. It was the real thing. Genuine. And when I had Max Tolner appraise it this morning, it turned out to be a fake. You know how it is after someone has died. Not long after the mourners have departed... The oftentimes unhappy business of settling the estate begins. It's somewhat unusual, however, when a daughter discovers that a costly pearl necklace willed to her by her mother is worthless. Had the mother sold it? Perhaps. Had the stepfather sold it? More likely. But why? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. with certainty, we must begin with doubting. That was written a couple of hundred years ago. Nothing highly original about it. Common sense ought to teach us, if not to doubt, at least to question. And that's what Gay Armstrong has been doing ever since her remarkable discovery. A pearl necklace willed to her by her mother and kept in a safety deposit box in a bank has been appraised as worthless. What became of the necklace? We will soon find out. Well, that's quite a story, Gay. What do you think? Oh, I don't know what to think. Uh, Let's be practical. The necklace is gone, but Gay has the 15 grand. Yeah, 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 I'm sure the money is great, but that's not her point. There's a mystery about the whole thing. What happened? 
That's what Gay wants to know. Exactly. The whole thing's as phony as plastic wood. Meaning my mother didn't sell the necklace? Of course not. Bart Lerner stole it. Oh, well, honey, I know how you feel about him. I like him, too. But he must have needed money, so he grabbed the necklace and sold it. You really think that Bart Lerner stole the necklace? Sure. Who else? Well, my mother m may have gone to the bank and... Oh, I doubt it. She was a pretty sick lady. It's easy to check. The receptionist at the bank vault makes you fill out a slip. Ask the bank to check out the time anyone asked for your safe deposit box, and you'll find out if your mother went to the bank this past year. That's an idea. I mean, it's obvious. I'll bet only Bart Lerner had gone to the bank. Also, can you believe for a minute that if Bart needed money, he wouldn't have talked it over with your mother and that she wouldn't have said, sell the necklace? They had a happy marriage, Gay. His story about all the secretness is so much hogwash. Either your mother said it was okay to sell the necklace or he stole it and sold it. But which was it? And how can we prove it? You can't. Bart can always say your mother agreed to have him sell the necklace. And you can't disprove that, Gay. But mother would have told me. Uh, maybe. I guess I'm with Preston there. Take the 15 grand and forget the mystery. If my mother told Bart he could sell the necklace, why didn't he say so? Why didn't he tell me soon after the funeral and before I went to the bank to get the necklace to have it appraised? I don't know. But don't, don't you find that kind of funny? He had a lot on his mind, honey, after no, all. No, no, you can't convince me. And, and what about now? He is giving me a, a check for the money because the necklace is false. Well, he's in the money now, Gay. But does anyone just hand over $15,000 to a stepdaughter? That strikes me as a... A guilty conscience. Hey, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. What? A year or so ago, Bart says he was pinched for money. Mm -hmm. Now, what about now? Today? He's making a lot of money. Doing what? I know he's a contractor, but what specifically is he doing? What's he building? Uh, well, I can answer that, Mike. Bart's company is building a big stretch of road in uh, northwest New York State. Miles and miles of it. Now, why? What are you thinking? A real story. <laughs> You've lost me, Mike. Good. Forget it. Let me just do a little digging. If I discover anything, I'll let you know. But what about my necklace? Mike, maybe if you ran a little human interest story in the forum... No, 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 I don't think so. That could embarrass you. I agree. All Mike could write about would be your suspicion that Bart Lerner stole the necklace. We don't know that. Oh, I'm sure of it now. That's not good enough, honey. You have to have proof. Also, so soon after your mother's death, you'd look, well, greedy. Oh, I suppose that's right. But what do I do? I got an idea. If it pans out, we'll know what happened to the real necklace. And I'll have a story for our front page. What kind of a story, Mike? Graft. Good evening, Mr. Rowley. Uh, it is kind of you to see me, Mrs. Knight. I, uh, I apologize for my late visit. 9.30? I'll <laughs> be up for hours. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Rowling, I'm intrigued by your visit. What you told me over the telephone. Oh, well, it's a very unusual situation. The original owner of the pearl necklace wants to buy it back. Isn't that what it comes down to? Uh, yes. That's it. Well, may I ask why? Not that I'm willing to sell the necklace. It's an extraordinary piece, worth much more than we paid for it when we bought it from you. Oh, I realize that. I, I told you that it was an exceptional buy. And you were correct, for which we are very grateful. Thank you. I would say that the necklace today would bring as much as uh, $25,000. Indeed. It is appreciated in value. Yes, I have a check here in that amount. I beg your pardon? Here is my check for $25,000, Mrs. Knight. But I have no idea of selling the necklace. I know that. You're being very mysterious. I will give you this check. You give me the necklace. Keep the check. Don't deposit it. In a few days, I will return with your necklace, and you will give me the check... I will tear it up and give you another check for a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? For your cooperation. Huh? I have never heard of anything like this. <laughs> well, neither have I. I told you it is a very unusual situation. But it doesn't make sense. Why would the original owner want the necklace back for just a few days? I cannot tell you, Mrs. Knight. Perhaps when I return the necklace... What if I refuse to cooperate? 
Well, I will just report your refusal to uh, my client. Well, there are some persons who, shall we say, play rough. Are you threatening me, Mr. Rowling? Oh, good heavens, no. The, the very idea of violence appalls me. Well, it sounded like a threat. Well, not for me. But if my client can't explain the disappearance of the pearl necklace to, uh, to, to others, there's no telling how many persons might be uh, uh, hurt. Well... It's not only unusual, Mr. Rowling, it's rather unpleasant. Oh, I agree. What if I turn the necklace over to my bank? Don't tell me these so-called strange men would break into the bank. Oh, no, 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 certainly not. That would be crude and obvious. You'd frighten me. It frightens me, too. Why do you think I've given up my evening to pay you this visit? I've enjoyed meeting you again, but I'm not here by choice. I see. Then I really don't have a choice, do I? The police? Oh, they could protect you. Up to a point. It is incredible. Sickening. As if I were being watched and controlled by some kind of secret police. Well, Mrs. Knight? Give me your check. Oh, thank you. I will return the necklace in a few days. I'm sorry about this, Mr. Rowling. Sorry for both of us. Excuse me. Hi, honey. What part? It's almost midnight. What are you doing up so late? Oh, waiting up for you. You have a nice time? Oh, very nice. Well, how's Preston? Fine. Did you just wait up, or did you want to see me about something? Well, yeah, matter of fact, I did. Huh? I've, uh, I've been thinking about you all day long. How upset you were this morning about your mother's necklace. And by the way, here's that check for you. But I... I don't know. Now, now, please, I want you to have it. But 15000 The real no. necklace is worth at least that much. So give me the fake necklace and we'll drop the subject for good. And you have it here? Yes, I left it in the desk drawer. All right, hand it over to your old stepfather and you'll never see it again. All right. I might as well tell you, Bart. I talked this over with Preston. Uh-huh. Uh, here, here's, here's the box. Oh, thank you. So, uh, what did Preston have to say? Take the check and forget about the necklace. Smart young man. <laughs> now, let me take a look at this thing. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Hard to believe it's a fake. I couldn't tell, could you? No. But we're not experts. They look like genuine pearls to me. I couldn't possibly tell the difference. No, neither could I. I mean, I've never seen more perfect match pearls. And these are fake? Mm, that's what the jeweler said. I wonder if he knows. Max Tonner? Oh, sure he does. He sold the real pearl necklace to my father. Why wouldn't he know? Well, Max Tonner's a pretty old man. He... Do you think he could be mistaken? I couldn't say, but these look pretty good to me. I mean, if this necklace is fake, it's... <laughs> it's one great piece of work. Mm. Oh, I... I wish I knew more about stuff like this. Well, let's not worry about it. You got the check, I got these. Maybe I'll have another jeweler examine them. Why don't we go back to Max? We? Oh, why not? I... Well, I owe it to you, Bart. What do you mean, owe it? Well, but will you forgive me if I tell you something? Forgive you for what? <laughs> My crazy imagination. You... Come again? Well, I thought about what you told me this morning, and I, I I just couldn't quite believe it, Bart. I mean, Mother selling the necklace to pay bills and and, and not telling me about it. Well, don't you think it would have embarrassed her, selling something she had already willed to you? Mm-hmm, that makes sense, now. And what else went through that imagination of yours? Oh, I'd rather not say. Makes me feel crummy. Wow. Oh, oh. Did, 
Did you think that I had stolen the necklace? Oh, please. Well, of course. It was a perfectly natural thing to think. I thought about it at work today. I, I knew what you were thinking. I feel terrible about it. Please forgive me. Done. And now let's forget it. <laughs> Are you going to see Max Tallner tomorrow? Well, he might as well. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, it couldn't be. <laughs> I was going to say, wouldn't it be wonderful if this necklace is the genuine one? Why, would would you want it back? Oh, no. It's beautiful. But it's not for me. You do prefer the check. Oh, yes. Oh, but I'd be happy if this thing was really worth what you paid for it. Oh, <laughs> that's too much to hope for. But it would be like having $15,000 fall right into my hands, huh? Yeah, Max said it was worthless. Well, he should know. He could have been mistaken. Maybe. We'll find out in the morning. Now, come on, take your check. And I'll put this necklace in the wall safe. Uh, just in case. From what we've heard, that pearl necklace seems to be a rope of hemp around Bart Lerner's neck. Why? Even though he took the necklace and sold it, no one could prove that his wife had not given it to him to sell. That was the reporter's point. But a crime, however small, somehow has a way of raising its head and staring down the person who committed it. I still don't know what Bart's real crime was, but we'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. really does cast a long shadow, meaning that there is always a vestige of a shadow trailing, however faintly, the person who did something wrong. Many crimes are not detected, of course, but they are known to the person, and try as hard as he will, his knowledge of something evil he has done cannot be erased from his conscience. If a man's life is his character, as many philosophers and writers maintain, then Bart Lerner was flawed by the weakness of temptation. Its consequences will now become apparent. Oh, well, my goodness, Miss Armstrong. You back again. Oh, I'm sorry to be a pest, Mr. Tom. No, 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 no. no. Come in, my dear, come in. Uh, this is my fiancé, Preston Welch, and Mike Shea, a reporter on the forum. Oh, oh, oh then, I, I don't want to talk to him. He'll make me look like a fool. No, 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 I won't, Mr. Towner. I'm after something bigger than what happened to you. What happened to me? Oh, what happened to me was I couldn't tell a fake pearl necklace from a real one. And if you print that story, I'll be laughed out of business. <laughs> I've already apologized to Miss Armstrong and to Mr. Dunner. And uh, Mr. Tallner, is there any doubt in your mind that the necklace you saw this morning, an hour and a half ago, is genuine? No, 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 not a doubt in the world. Yesterday I looked at the same necklace and told Miss Armstrong the pearls were fake. Uh, no, you didn't, Mr. Tallner. Well, I didn't. Well, I... I must be going crazy. You are the victim of a switch. The first necklace you saw was a fake. Now, last night, Bart Lerner and Miss Armstrong looked at it again. Lerner had his doubts about your appraisal. This morning, they showed you the genuine pearl necklace. Is, it, is this true? We think so, Mr. Tarner. Well, then, then I haven't lost my mind. No. But, but why, why, why the switch? Can you, can you prove it? We're going to try. We need your help. If you were going to sell the real pearl necklace... Who would you take it to? Well, no one here in White Plains, I don't think. New, New York City, probably, yes. The big buyers and sellers are in the jewelry center down there. Uh-huh. Can you give me um, some names? Oh, 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 there are so many. Becker, Taubner, uh, Wohling, Donitz Arnold, Wohling. He's very big. Uh -huh. He arranges many big deals and all legitimate. Uh, press, hit the road and see what you can find out about... Um... Okay, Arnold Walling. I'll go with you, Fred. No, you won't. You get back to your job. I'll report back to Mike if I have any luck. And I've got reports coming in already. Reports? About what? Payola, baby. The truth about your pearl necklace could rock the state. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Walling. Uh, you, you said that you are a lawyer? Yes. Yes, I practice in White Plains. Oh, I see. 
And you said you wanted to ask me about a, a pearl necklace with, with the idea of, of buying one? No, Mr. Walling. With the idea of finding out the name of the person from whom you bought it. Ah, assuming that I did buy such a necklace, the name of the seller is confidential information. You can, of course, understand that. Of course. Uh, just what is your interest in the necklace? It was willed to a young lady I know. When she went to have it appraised, it was declared worthless. A fake necklace had been substituted for the genuine one. Oh, I, uh, I see. Do you, Mr. Walling? Someone had to make that false necklace. You bought the genuine one and sold it. Those were legitimate transactions, Mr. Welch. I, I don't question that, but if you sold it, how did it happen that this morning at 9 o'clock, the young lady had the necklace appraised a second time, and this time, it was the genuine article? I, well, I, I can't say. Did you help to arrange the switch, Mr. Walling? And before you answer, it is the opinion of a very sharp newspaper reporter, Mike Shea, and mine also, the money obtained through the sale of the pearl necklace was used as payoff money to an unscrupulous member of the Roads and Highways Commission. What does that have to do with me? I want the name of the person who sold the necklace to you and the person to whom you sold it. You don't know the former? Uh, yes, uh, but I want your testimony as proof. And I want to visit the buyer in order to piece this scheme together. Ah, and if I tell you what I know... I'll give you my word that I'll protect you and the buyer from publicity and innuendo. As a businessman, I have never violated a confidence. I said I'd protect you from publicity and innuendo, Mr. Walling. But can you protect my life? And that is all I know, Mr. Welch. Welch, is it? Uh, yes, yes. It's a beautiful necklace, Mrs. Knight. It is. It is. Mr. Walling brought it back to me this morning, and I returned his check. You will keep my name out of the papers, won't you? Certainly. It's an evil talisman. Well, I'm sorry for the stepfather. You say he's a nice man. Yes, he's very nice. Mm. Made a mistake is all. Not so much in selling the necklace to Mr. Walling, but in paying money to influence the paving contract. You know that for a fact? Just about. You expect him to involve the man he bribed? Well, he'll have to explain what he did with the money. If he won't, he'll go to court. Under oath, he'd have to talk. Alternative is jail. Oh. I wouldn't like to see that happen. Oh, but he'll be punished, of course. But if he cooperates with us, he might just be fined and placed on probation. I'm sorry for him. I am too. As I said, he's really a nice man. Bart Lerner speaking. What? Why, well, I can't believe... A story tonight's for him. Oh, I'll be, I'll be ruined. No, 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 of course not. I... Who, who telephoned you? Walling? I... Well, it knocks me out. I... I... Yes, well, let me explain, please, sir. Look, my, my stepdaughter had the necklace appraised this morning. It was the real one. She was happy. She kept the check I'd given her, and I returned the necklace to Walling. I thought the whole thing was over and done with. Yes, sir, I, I, I realize it isn't a... Of course, sir. I'll protect you. Well, thank you. I'm going to need the best brains you can buy. I can't tell you how sorry I am. What do I do? What can I do? Ah, here's Mike. Yep, right off the press. It's, um, not a nice story, Gay. Oh, Mike. Public road paved with pearls. Bart Lerner suspected of selling stepdaughter's heirloom necklace to bribe roads and highways official. Ah, it's all here. Except for the names of Wall and Mrs. Knight. Thanks, Mike. It's... It is. Poor Bart. Poor Bart, my foot. He stole your necklace, Gay, and used the money for payola. He's a small frog. We've got the big one on the hook, and with or without Bart's cooperation, we're going to deck him. But it, it is so cruel, seeing it in cold print like this. 
I can't face Bart. I just can't. Yes, you can. But I... I betrayed him. Gay, if he had told you the truth in the beginning, none of this would have happened. He deceived you. He made two mistakes. Acting surprised when you found out that the necklace was a fake, and then scrambling to work out a switch. Come on, Gay, let's get over there. You can't hide from this. He won't squeal on the commissioner. You think he'll prefer to go to jail? Sit down, Preston. Mike. Right, thank you. I didn't know that rotten necklace. There was nothing wrong with the necklace, honey. Now, come on, try your tears. How can you take it like this, Bart? What else can I do? I made a mistake. I have to pay for it. Oh, I'm so sorry. It just breaks my heart. Yeah, I'm kind of sorry, too. Well, Mike, you've had a field day, haven't you? I don't look at it that way, Mr. Lerner. You know, your newspaper is going to have a libel suit on its hands tomorrow. We can support what I wrote. You think so? Yes. All that Preston and I found out isn't in that article. Oh, I admit selling the necklace. My wife knew about that at the time. That's not what you told Gay. You said she probably had sold it. And you can't guess why. I didn't want Gay to think your mother and I had robbed her of a gift. Freely given. Wait a minute. If you agreed to sell the necklace, why did you have Mr. Woling make a paste copy of it? I don't think I'll answer that question. I gave Gay $15,000 for the imitation necklace... To make her forget the whole thing, sure. But that's where I came in, Mr. Lerner. Just a little more than a year ago, you were awarded a big paving contract. Why you? Well, we ran that down. You got the contract because one of the commissioners recommended you very strongly. Did you bribe him, Bart? Gay, I've been an honest man all my life. So you won't answer the question. I've told you that your newspaper will have a libel suit on its hands tomorrow. Look, we don't intimidate easily. If you want to sue for libel, go ahead. Then all the facts will come out from the theft of the necklace. I didn't to... steal the necklace, and I've paid Gay what it's worth. You're going to have to explain why you engineered this whole thing. And you're going to have to explain what you did with the 20 grand you got from Woling. Where did the money go, Mr. Lerner? It'll all come out. And if you won't talk, you know where you'll end up. Jail. Don't say that, Mike. He's right, though, Gay. But... Please admit what you did. If you did make a mistake, admit it. Isn't that what you've always told me? Admit a mistake and you can be forgiven? Well, honey, that's easier said than done. Have you been threatened? Already? What are you talking about, Mike? Okay. You're really very naive. Your stepfather is in trouble. You mean... If Bart talks... They'll... They'll kill him? Sound melodramatic? Well, it's true. He's already been warned, haven't you, Mr. Lerner? Yep. Well, you get rubbed out or spend a long time in jail. Not much of a choice, is it? I wouldn't like to make it. Well, I'm not talking. I'll see you in court, Mr. Lerner. Good night, Mr. Lerner. Gay, I'll be going, too. Talk to you tomorrow, baby. Okay. Bart? Yeah? Did you bribe that man? <laughs> no, honey. You... You didn't? No. Well, I, I don't understand, then. He he got the money. If he had... Yeah, it, he got the money. Who gave it to him? Who is he, Bart? I hadn't been very successful as a road constructor. Never landed a big bid. I didn't know why. The man who received the money is named Thornbury. I know him, Bart. He was a friend of my parents. Yeah, and an influential man. And you, you didn't give him the bribe money? No, but I intend to say I didn't. Well, if you didn't give it to him, who... Bart. It got me the bid, honey. It was well-intentioned. Mother. She did it for you. And now... Now he'll go to jail. It's our secret, Gay Honey. And no one is ever to know. And so the long shadow of a loving intention, which was a crime, 
for bribery certainly is that, will imprison a guiltless man. Not if he'll tell the truth, but could he do that to the memory of his dead wife and to the stepdaughter he loves? Quite a remarkable man, Bart Lerner. I shall be back shortly. I leave you with this thought. Crime is never founded on reason. Mrs. Lerner wanted to do her husband a favor. He'll go to jail rather than sully his dead wife's memory. Yes, quite a remarkable man. Our cast included Evie Juster, William Redfield, Jay Gregory, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You don't remember me, Judge? Oh, who are you? I'm the girl who gambled and lost. Stop talking in riddles. I'm Althea, Judge. The town girl who wasn't good enough to marry Richard. Dick, what's the meaning of... The meaning is that I promised to pay you back and I'm giving Dick one million dollars to kill you. Well, this is crazy. Show him the revolver, Richard. This is a joke. It's Nobody a must... should choke with a loaded thirty-eight in his hand. Dick, after all I've done for you... What have you done for him lately? I swear to you, I, I'll leave you everything in my will. Here, I'll, I'll even write it out now and, and, and sign it. Can you give him a million dollars? No, you don't have that much, and that's my bid. Dick, you can't kill me. I've known you since you were... Shoot him. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 